I've once heard this phrase that any fool can learn from their own mistakes, the smart ones will learn from other people's mistakes. I honestly take this principle very close to heart. At this point in my life, I owe most of my mental frameworks and ways of viewing the world to people who are a lot smarter than me. One of these people is Naval Ravikant. If you are anything like me and you do not already know Naval, I honestly hope that you find these things in this video as life-changing as I did, but I would definitely recommend checking the man himself out. He is absolutely brilliant and the way that he views the world is like nothing else. So I'm going to jump straight into my favourite things that I've learned from him. The first one is that the opposite of play isn't work, it is depression. This one hit me quite hard because I feel as though we always put these things on two sides of the spectrum, which is definitely something that I used to do in the past, where on one hand we have play and on the other hand we have work. And the way that he phrased it in saying that actually the opposite of having fun is being depressed, it's not working, and working sit somewhere in between probably, depending on how fun or how depressing you find it. This was very liberating for me because it helped me move from that dichotomy of am I having fun or am I miserable and working and kind of seeing that I could honestly be feeling as though I'm playing during work if I am enjoying what I'm doing. This was very, very helpful. The next one is that desire is choosing to be unhappy until you get what you want. This was quite thought provoking because it kind of showed that dark side to desire and passion and wanting things. I feel as though in general, I'm the kind of person who will think that goals are always great and wanting to achieve things is surely a positive thing because it means a growth. However, I think this phrase beautifully captures the view that there is a huge gap usually between what the state that you are in now and you achieving that goal. Perhaps I need to pay a bit more attention to the space in between, which is where I'm spending the most of my life rather than that tick box of achieving certain things. I think it kind of also makes me reflect that what things do I want that I'm perhaps not thinking of and not admitting to myself? Do I have goals that I haven't considered before that are making me miserable because I haven't achieved them yet? It's not always the goals of, oh, graduating from university, for example, but it might be subtle goals here and there that I'm not admitting to myself or that I haven't ever said out loud or that I haven't even realized that might be contributing to my unhappiness. This is an exercise that I do every now and then to see what's happening in my mind. An point that he made that I loved was that if you survey or ask enough people for advice, the results will all cancel out to zero. And this is so important. <laughs> um, I feel as though I often want to please everyone, especially when being online, but this is something I've dealt with my whole life, in that it's so easy to think what will other people think and to try to make a decision based on that. However, if you really want to take into account what everyone will think, someone will absolutely hate and someone will absolutely love the same thing and everyone else will be somewhere in between on that spectrum. So for most decisions, if I were to actually ask everyone, I would be left paralyzed and unable to make a choice because everything would just cancel out to zero. So this kind of reminds me that especially in those times where I'm getting mixed signals about what I should or shouldn't do, I should just try to stop thinking about other people and try to explore to the extent that I do have insight, what I actually want and what I think would be best for me and what I feel like doing, rather than pretending as though I'm looking for information out there, because that might be biased on its own. If I was actually looking for information out there, it would all probably be nonsense. Sometimes it is good to just not think about that at all and make my own decisions. The next one I'm going to read out loud because it's quite long, but it says, I'm always working. It looks like work to them, but it's like play to me. That's how I know no one can compete with me. They are going to work and they are going to lose because they're not going to work 16 hours a day, seven hours a week. This really hit me hard. <laughs> I absolutely love it. Of course, I am not at all comparing myself to Naval and his levels of success and the things that he has achieved, but I think everyone can relate to this to some extent. There are things that just come naturally to you. I think realizing what am I doing that I love doing, that feels really, really easy, that does not feel like work to me, that others are seeing and thinking, how are you doing this? This is so difficult. And those are the things that I should kind of double down on and do more of. I don't think I'm a very competitive person because I like to play 
at my own strengths. But if someone else were to want to compete with me in something that comes very naturally to me, like Naval said, if it doesn't come naturally to them, they're very unlikely to win in that. Not that the goal is for me to win compared to others, but for me to enjoy the moment. For example, making these YouTube videos, I'm very often happy to be up until 6am editing to publish the next day. And this is something that just comes naturally to me that I very much enjoy doing. That can seem like work and the worst nightmare to so many people. I personally know this for a fact, but it just shows that I am kind of doing the right thing for myself, if that makes sense. So because I'm the kind of person who, when I enjoy things, I can do them all day, every day, I double down on those things like medicine and reading and taking notes and drawing and YouTube now. So this recommendation kind of helped me realize that, oh, I'm onto something here if I'm not finding something to feel like work. The next expression, which is very relevant to me right now, is that social media is making celebrities of us and celebrities are the most miserable people in the world. When you have an ego to maintain, that is very dangerous. I feel as though I have a huge part in my second brain regarding social media and my issues with social media because I definitely had and still have a lot of them. I always think that there is a right way and a wrong way to do even wrong things. I do think that there is a right way to do YouTube and the internet. I just don't know what that is exactly, I'm trying to figure it out, but I am very much aware on both levels in this expression, both of social media very easily making someone fall into the trap of paying a lot of attention and trying to maintain their ego and this is something that I'm very very consciously trying to avoid by not taking myself seriously and by trying to always ground myself in who I am and what I want to do and making weird videos like this because I actually enjoy them rather than what my perception of myself might be to other people if that makes sense. I think Naval really helped me with this one and also the realization of celebrities being the most miserable people also hit me hard because um, I think when I was younger I definitely idolized my favorite actors and thought that they had the best lives but I do realize now, for example, because of social media, we are a lot closer to celebrities perhaps than we were before, or at least we are given a bit more insight into what is happening in their lives and realizing that um, things are not as perfect as we, we thought they were. And perhaps they have to deal with a lot more difficulties than someone who is not as well known or exposed would have to deal with. So for both of those reasons, this view is very important to me. The next one is that everyone seems to think that the only way to get peace is to solve external problems, but there are unlimited external problems. You can only resolve inner problems. Now, I don't think he meant, and I don't take this to mean that we should not try to make the world a better place because by doing so, we are making it easier for other people to find their inner peace. But I don't think that solving external problems will solve my internal problems necessarily. Those two are not one and the same. Despite genuinely wanting to improve the world and to spread positivity, I know that my peace will only come from within. And I know this is very, very cliche, but I think this perfectly captured the fact that if I thought I were to be happy by serving external problems, I am not going to live long enough to be able to do that, even if it was guaranteed that I would succeed at every one I wanted to solve. Realizing this and thinking that true happiness will actually only come from within and anything else is an extra and something on top of that was very important for me and kind of inspires me to do a bit more self-reflection and work on myself. The next one is that depression requires a certain level of privacy. Um, this one is just as simple as it is short in the sense that having a good support system does not in any way prevent or guarantee that there will not be difficult times, but it can definitely help. The next one, which I've mentioned once before on my channel, is that the people who have the ability to fail publicly in their own name will also get to reap the rewards. And this doesn't only have to apply to social media, this is a principle that I use in general, that I think it ties in with that ego aspect. There is a huge fear of putting yourself out there or of publicly admitting that you want something, that you want to be a certain person. Saying that out loud and perhaps not achieving it and having the people who heard realize that you didn't do this right 
is a very difficult thing and a very difficult hit to take on your ego. You can use this in both ways. If you do want to achieve things that can come from putting your work out there, you need to realize that you will only do those if you take that risk and if you bet on your ego in a certain way. And also, it is a good way, I think, to try and convince yourself to do things. So for example, just knowing how easy an ego is to bruise if you actually want to achieve something, perhaps making a public commitment of wanting to do it, will make you more likely to actually want to follow through. Again, this does kind of go into the territory of wanting to protect your ego, which is perhaps not the best thing, but I guess harnessing these sorts of problematic tendencies can also work in certain situations. The next one, which I really, really like, is that the purpose of money is that you do not have to be at a specific place at a specific time doing something you don't want to do. I think this is very beautiful because I often wonder how much I care about money and how much and what role it plays in my life, which is not a lot, I think. This quantification of what the value of money is was so liberating, simple, and beautiful for me. If I would have enough money to avoid doing things that I don't want to do, then that is the maximum amount of happiness that I can get from money. And it's also then very easy for me to know how much that is, because I can just, you know, write down the things that I don't want to be doing and therefore and kind of quantify exactly how many thousands of pounds a month is that for me to avoid these things and have full financial freedom and the maximum amount of happiness from money that I can get. So yes, those were my main learning points from Naval, which is honestly, like I said, one of the most beautiful characters that I have ever had the pleasure to hear before. I honestly feel that I could go on for days on each of these topics because there's just so much to discuss about them. I do wonder if they are as interesting to other people at all as they are to me. As always, thank you so much for spending this time with me. I do hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Be kind to yourself and others and don't believe everything you think. Thanks. Bye.